All right, in this video, I'm going to show you a workflow that takes you from Python or a Jupyter Notebook where you build a visual, you export it, you import it into Adobe Illustrator, you clean the graphic up, add annotations, make it look beautiful, and then you export it using a tool called AI to HTML that will allow you to embed it wonderfully on an HTML web page. If you don't know why you use AI to HTML, you're going to have to hold on for a bit. But if you're just here to see the wild ride that is this very common data journalism workflow, you're in the right place. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to read in our data. It's a very boring data set. It's just a list of countries, GDP per capita, life expectancy. I am going to build a scatter plot out of this. Now, when you are building a graphic, to take from Python and import into Illustrator and do this whole workflow, it honestly doesn't matter what tool you use to make the graphic. In this case, we're going to be using Plot9, uh, which is basically R's ggplot, but for Python. But if you're using Pandas, if you're using Matplotlib, if you're using Altair or any of those other tools, they're perfectly fine. Uh, pretty much any tool that you can use to build a graph in Jupyter Notebook is going to be okay. So even though we are just using ggplot here, like I said, anything works. So I'm going to be making a scatter plot of GDP per capita versus life expectancy, and I'm going to color every single circle based on the continent of the country. If you want to look at this graphic, looks like this, pretty boring, nothing to write home about. Um, maybe we'll add a title to it. Here are some countries. I cannot spell. And, you know, I don't really like this gray background here, so we're going to throw a little bit of a default black and white theme on it. You know, this is, this is nothing exciting. It's just a graphic, but it's really all we need. Because the real magic comes in when we save it from here, and then clean up our visual in Illustrator. Um, so if we want to save this into a file that we can edit, um, we're going to save it as a chart. I'm going to say, hey, I have a variable called chart. Chart, save, uh, what are we going to call it? Countries.svg, and it's going to save. I kind of want confirmation of what chart looks like, so I'm going to type it again, run it again. There are a few warnings here, but they're nothing really to worry about. This is just Plot9 talking to us, saying, hey, we saved this as a 6.4 inch by 4.8 inch image, and the file name is countries.svg. Uh, we could get rid of that by adding verbose equals false, but honestly, I kind of like the tips. Now, it's saving it as an image of a certain size, and yes, it has to be done in inches. Why? I don't know the answer. Why isn't it pixels? It should be. I want the image to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to add a figure size onto this, make it maybe 10 inches across, 7 inches tall. Maybe I'll make these dots a little bit bigger. Eh, add a little transparency. And there we go. This is our graphic. Now, when you're saving using, you know, matplotlib, Altair, something else, you will save it using, you know, some other command. The only reason it's chart.save countries.svg is because this is ggplot slash plot9. The one important thing about this, though, is it has to be saved as either an SVG or a PDF. It must be SVG or PDF. It cannot be a GIF. It cannot be a PNG. It cannot be a JPEG. If you are importing this into AI to HTML, the only kinds of uh, files that allow you to treat, let's say, this dot as separate from this dot, this text from separate from this text, is going to be an SVG or a PDF. Uh, if you use one of those other file formats, it's just going to crush them all into a bunch of pixels, and there will be no real difference between, let's say, this circle here and this circle here. Now, one edit we have to make, one tiny, tiny thing. If you're using matplotlib or plot9 in order to save this SVG, in order for text to export correctly, we need to add this line up here. PLT RC params SVG font type equals none. 
if we do not add this line here, the H is going to export as a shape. The E is going to export as a shape. The R, the E, the A, the R, the E, all of these letters are going to export as shapes. Once we add this line, though, we can now edit this text inside of Illustrator and we don't have to retype everything. So if you end up in a situation where your text is being weird, make sure that you added SVG font type equals none. And why does this happen? And eh, it's a weird like type three fonts thing. We don't need to get into it. Just know it's something you have to have there. So one last time, I'm just gonna shift, enter, shift, enter, shift, enter, save all this stuff. Wonderful, there we go. We now have countries.svg. I'm gonna take countries.svg and I'm gonna load it on into Adobe Illustrator. It's gonna yell at me. It's gonna say clipping will be lost on round trip to tiny. I don't care. Deja vu sans, an unknown problem occurred. It couldn't find a font. I don't care. It's fine. We'll figure that out in another video. And now we have this delightful, delightful image. Now, why are we using AI to HTML? Why do we not just take this image and throw it right onto this page? Uh, the major issue is if we resize this page, the text in the image is going to get really small. Uh, if you watch another video of mine about AI to HTML, it's a longer intro. It kind of shows you a few examples. Um, when you export from Illustrator using AI to HTML, it just makes a much better experience for everyone visiting your page. So let's do this. Um, I will make a second video that shows you all of the tips about how to clean this graphic up to make it very nice and presentable in order to turn it into a moderately successful, annotated, nicely colored graphic. For now, let's just do the basics. If we have this black selection tool selected, which is the default way that you're going to be selecting things, if you click, it just selects everything all at the same time and moves all the content around um, at once. Um, because we probably want to edit these piece by piece, we want to edit this text, we want to edit this text, we want to you know, delete this legend over here. We want to treat all of these elements separately. In order to treat all of those elements separately, what you have to do is select all of this, object, ungroup. You can also click shift command G, and you just have to keep ungrouping, 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 ungrouping forever and ever. I just hold down command and shift and just smash G a handful of times. And then magically after that happens, we can select everything individually. Um, on top of that, we now need to select everything and say object clipping mask release. Object clipping mask and if there's another one there, also click release. Um, these two tasks are necessary because when the file is exported as an SVG from Jupyter Notebooks, uh, it just has some extra stuff in it. Um, and do we need those things? Eh, kind of, somewhat, sometimes. But generally speaking, you're always going to do those two steps uh, so you can just you know, interact with the chart in the way that you feel like you should interact with it. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to delete this title. I click it, I hit delete, title goes away. Uh, the title was important because we were trying to analyze things in our Jupyter Notebook and we wanted to know what the visualization meant, what it was about. But when you export the AI to HTML, 99 times out of 100, you're working in a newsroom where you're going to be typing the text in the HTML. Um, you're not gonna be typing the text in here in Illustrator. Um, same thing with uh, these access labels. I don't need them. Uh, I'm going to make 60 turn into 60,000, just little tweaks that are going to make your visual look nicer. Let me just add some commas down here, uh, and then we'll be good to go. Is this a nice graphic? No, not really, but it's fine. Um, I'll also, oh, <laughs> here's my favorite thing. If you go to click a background and you just kind of like drag your mouse around, you're gonna get this weird white, or depending upon the background of your image, um, little square here, or the rectangle. It's just the background. You can just delete it. Uh, it's fine, no big deal. Now I'm gonna select all of these things from the continent. I'm gonna delete them. This is my graphic. Maybe I'll center it. In another video, we'll talk about how to really clean this up. For now, we just wanna get through the export steps. So, 
We've successfully cleaned this up. It looks beautiful now. You know, we added a little bit of things down here. I guess I'll add 80 years up here. 80 years. I'm going to push it on over to the left. Honestly, though, here's a secret trick. Uh, in order to keep a resizing work well, we're going to select all of these and we're going to right align all of them. And then we're going to push them all over. Okay, great. Now everything's perfect. Um, the time has come. The time has come to use AI to HTML. So in order to use AI to HTML, we're going to go to AI to HTML org. We can click how to install AI to HTML. And then there's like really complicated descriptions that are about moving it to a really crazy location. I don't really care about that. Not going to do it. Just going to right click um, latest version of the script here, save link as, and I'm going to save it um, into the same folder as my SVG file or my Jupyter notebook or, or whatever it is. So wherever I'm currently working on my project, I'm going to save this. You could put it anywhere on your computer. You could put it on your desktop. I don't care. It's just nice if it's in a place where you know where it is. Uh, and for me, the place where I know where it is, is it's going to be sitting in this video folder. Now what I want to do is use the script. So I'm going to go into Illustrator, File, Scripts, Other Script. If we installed it in the way that the website wanted us to install it, it would show up in this list of scripts here, but it's not that hard to just click Other Script. We're going to browse to where AI to HTML JS lives. We're going to click AI to HTML. We're going to hit Open. It's going to do some stuff. It's going to give us some information. Um, honestly, this should be giving us some font errors, but it's not, but it's fine. Everything's good. Um, it says it ran it. It created a settings text block. Um, there was a folder that didn't exist, so it made the folder and it ran in 0.5 seconds. We're going to hit OK. We're going to check and see. It said there was a settings block that got added to the left. If we move to the left, we see yes. This is it right here. This is a settings block. If we want to change settings about AI to HTML, uh, we say it changed those settings here. So for example, HTML output path is where it saved the HTML. Um, and if we look in Finder, we see when we ran AI to HTML.js, it created a new folder called AI to HTML output. And inside is a PNG file and an HTML file. If we look at this PNG file, it looks like our graphic, but without any text. But then if we open up the HTML file, it looks like our graphic, but it does have text on it. Magically, though, you can select this text. This is the joy of AI to HTML. Um, whereas normally, if you included this as a PNG or a JPEG on a page, no one could select text. Uh, but thanks to the joys of AI to HTML, um, it becomes fully selectable, translatable, everything like that. What we want to do now is we want to take this HTML file here and this PNG here, and we want to place it on this page. Later on in life, we'll talk about how to have responsive design. We'll talk about how to change this file name. We'll talk about how to clean this visualization up. For now, we'll talk about changing fonts. For now, it's just a game of let's get this graphic that we exported and get it saved onto our sample website. So we're going to do two things. First thing we're going to do is we are going to copy the PNG file from our AI to HTML output page, and we're going to put it in our website folder. Now, we cannot just add this image to our web page. Let me show you what happens if we try to do that. I go to my index. I add an image tag, image src equals, there we go. That's our image. I save it. I refresh our web page, and, you know, I mean, I guess it's there, but it doesn't have any text on it. As we looked at before, what's happening is the image itself doesn't have text. It's this magic HTML file, oh, sorry, it's the magic HTML file in the AI to HTML output page that has all of the text on it. Um, it's just magic HTML stuff. So what we want to do is take the contents of the export file, of the file that is in AI to HTML output. 
I'm going to open it up in VS Code. Note that it has the same name as the file. The file is countries.svg. My HTML is countries underscore svg.html. Same thing with the PNG, countries underscore svg. Note that you cannot change this file name or else it's going to break your visualization. If you want to know how to change the file name, because for some reason it bothers you, watch the next video. But for now, let's just open countries underscore svg.html. Has a bunch of real fancy looking stuff, a bunch of CSS, a bunch of HTML. We're just going to copy all of this code here. We're going to copy all of this code and we're going to add it into our index.html. So we want it to go in between these two paragraphs of text. I'm going to add a lot of enter symbols in between this so I can cut and paste this and then easily see, oh, here's the end of AI to HTML. Got a bunch of blank space. Here's the start of the AI to HTML. Here's a bunch of blank space. So if I need to edit it later in the future, it's easy for me to scroll around on the page and find it. Because this gets really complicated once you have a more complicated graphic with a lot more text annotations. So now that I've pasted it in there, I'm going to save it. I'm going to go back to my web page. I'm going to refresh. And there we go. It's beautiful. It's got some text there. Text is a little small, let's be honest. Um, but you can see that as we resize, the text doesn't get too small for us to read. Granted, the spacing here is a little bit off down at the bottom. Spacing over there seems fine, but this is all stuff we can fix in Illustrator uh, later on. So there you go. That's your AI to HTML workflow. Um, no matter what you're working on inside of your Jupyter Notebook, whether it's matplotlib, whether it's plot9, whether it's Altair, you save everything as an SVG. Um, you make sure that SVG font type equals none, so you get that nice editable text. You open it up, clean it up in Illustrator, run that script from other scripts, and then just copy and paste everything into your index.html. Um, as long as you make sure that PNG is in the same folder as your website, you'll be good to go. So look out for the next video where we will cover uh, some tips and tricks about how to clean up your visual here, uh, how to customize fonts, how to make sure that this doesn't look exactly as ugly as when it came out of Python, but instead looks a little bit better.